starting us off at number 10, Dark Watchers. So Dark Watchers are humanoid beings ranging from 7 to 15 feet tall. They are cloaked figures, sometimes with wide brimmed hats that have been reported to melt and merge with shadows. If you spot one, they can disappear within the blink of an eye. They are mainly spotted in California. The earliest sightings are by the native Chamash tribe whose oral history of the Old Ones goes back centuries. The Old Ones are said to observe from a distance. As recently as 2018, a man said he encountered one. He was hiking up a remote trail and came upon a dark figure. He waved as a joke, not thinking it was a person, and it waved back. Then he thought he might just be tripping out or something, so he took a puff of his cigarette, and then the figure blew out a plume of smoke as well. And if that wasn't trippy enough, it started flowing and nearly floating vertically, so the man ran back to his car. If you ever encounter one, don't be too wary. They're not known to harm anyone as long as they're not disturbed, so just keep on your merry way and you should be fine. At number 9, Tizaruk. So the Tizaruk is a sea serpent found in Alaskan folklore that roams Alaska's waters. It's described as 7 feet long with the tail ending in a flipper. The total length is about 12 to 15 feet long. It's also called a Cadborosaurus from one academic suggestion. This led to the nickname Caddy being given to the sea serpent that's occasionally spotted. It's been said to snatch people from docks and piers. So a video came out in 2009 claiming that it was a Tizaruk, but some say it was a herd of sea lions. Mysterious sea serpents are rumored all around the world. Shout out to Nessie, and I think Caddy is believable. As recently as 2016, a new species of whale was discovered in Alaska's waters, so really we can't rule out the existence of something else out there. So Tizaruk, Caddy, whatever you call it, Alaska might have it for you. Maybe go take a peek. Hit up Alaska. Why not? On to number eight, the Wampus Beast. So this cryptid is also known as a Wampus Cat. It is a jet black panther cat creature with glowing eyes. It's mainly seen in Appalachia. So Cherokee folklore says it was a woman wearing hides to spy on her husband, but guards caught her and cast spells on her. This caused the hides she was wearing to form onto her. One rumor says that the Wampus Beast lives in sewers. But anyways, one story goes that a nine-year-old boy saw this beast late at night. His parents told him to get something from the shed. He went out and came face to face with a jet black panther-like creature with glowing eyes, just as we described. The creature gave a weird high-pitched hissing-like sound, which then frightened the boy to go back inside to his house. Then years later, on the same farm, the boy had another encounter with the beast. He lost a lot of pigs to the beast, but he did escape the encounter with his life. Number seven, gargoyle. So you might be familiar because the term gargoyle is used in architecture, but it is also a term to describe cryptids that resemble the gargoyles we see in architecture. They are described as roughly humanoid monsters with leathery bat-like wings. They resemble the popular conceptions of demons pretty much. So a popular example of a gargoyle is the gargoyle of Glastonbury. This gargoyle supposedly haunts researchers who try to learn too much about King Arthur. But there isn't just one gargoyle out there. One person in the states claimed to see one fly over their car. Their mom was driving and they thought they were the only one to see it, but their mom looked at them pale as a sheet and said, did you see that? They described it as a thin, bony, lanky gray thing that was illuminated, coated in like a soft light. They said it kind of looked like a huge, starving, human-esque bat creature, and all in all, I'm just rethinking everything about the hunchback of Notre Dame right now. Those gargoyles? What if it's based off something real? All I'm saying. All I'm saying. So some people said the possible gargoyle the last person described sounded a little bit like Mothman. So that brings us to number six, Mothman. If you haven't heard, the Mothman is described as a six or seven foot tall dark humanoid figure with wings and bright red glowing eyes. This legend began November 1966 in Clendenin, West Virginia. The story goes that five men were at their local cemetery preparing a grave for burial. Then all of a sudden, something that looked like a brown human being lifted off from some nearby trees and flew over their heads. The men were shocked. It did not appear to be a bird, but more like a man with wings. And then, a few days later, sightings kept taking place with stories spreading around the entire region. While it has been spotted all over West Virginia, its main habitat seems to be Point Pleasant. Specifically in an area locals call the TNT area, where there have been hundreds of sightings. So now in Point Pleasant, there is a Mothman statue, Mothman Museum, and Mothman Festival. And honestly, that's just fun hype, and I want to go. So bad. But here's another man creature cryptid at number five, Dogman. So Dogman or Dogmen is an umbrella term for an upright canine cryptid. They are mainly found stalking North American woods, as you can see by this map of reported sightings. So some describe another version of a Dogman, sometimes called a Type 3, a Sasquatch looking creature with the face of a dog. So here's one story that is similar to how many sightings of a Dogman or Dogmen go down. A man and his mom were sitting on their porch that faces an alley when it got eerily quiet. They turned their attention to where a trash can had fallen over. 
over. They thought they saw just a big dog, but it got up on its hind legs. Its height was taller than the security fence their neighbors put up. His mom went inside and he backed away slowly into his house. Now he says he won't walk anywhere at night alone. While there is a large sum of people who have reported sightings where they said they felt frightened, few sightings have resulted in actual attack or harm. And that being said, if you come across a dog man and feel frightened, like you could be attacked, just walk away. Cause you just don't want to risk it. Honestly, mm, no. And so yeah, we talked about dog man, so we need to talk about number four. Goatman. He is described as half goat and half human, as the name suggests. Goatman walks on two legs and is seven feet tall. I feel like a lot of these are seven feet tall or seven feet long. Just saying. So the story goes that a scientist was experimenting on ghosts until one experiment backfired. Then he was mutated, becoming goat like himself. He then began attacking cars with an axe, roaming the back roads of Beltsville, Maryland. He has been blamed for the deaths of countless hikers. In 1962, Goatman allegedly slaughtered 14 hikers after they went too close to his hideout. It was written, he chopped his victims to pieces while emitting screams that only the devil himself would make. Now people believe he hides out under an old bridge, waiting for his next victim. At number three, Alta Mahaha. The Altamahaha is also called Alti. It is said that it was discovered by the Taman native tribe before the British English colonization. The existence of Alti has been recognized by Native Americans for centuries. It is described as 20 to 30 feet long with a sturgeon like body and a bony ridge on its top. Its color is gray with a whitish yellow underbelly, but it can be shown to be green. This may be for camouflaging reasons. It has front flippers but no back limbs, and it has large protruding eyes and large sharp teeth. Apparently, it swims like a dolphin but has the snout of a crocodile and big bug eyes. Basically, it's located in small streams and abandoned rice fields near the Altamaha River. So it has not been said to be explicitly dangerous, but don't go near it if you see one. If it has the face of a crocodile, you can bet it has the bite of one too. And with those, you just punch it in the nose, just or like plug its nose and it can't breathe, and then you'll be let go. Just tips, pro tips for crocodiles. On to number two, the Orang Pendek. So the Orang Pendek is a mysterious ape of Sumatra, an island of Western Indonesia. In the Indonesian language, Orang Pendek translates to short person. So it could possibly be a homo genus, and it's believed to be an undiscovered kind of primate species, possibly. It is most commonly described by those who have seen it as a bipedal creature that stands from two and a half to five feet tall. They are covered in golden brown or gray hair and have similar mannerisms to humans. Different than monkeys, they are also said to have human-like facial features. Witnesses have also claimed to see them ripping apart logs, akin to Captain America ripping one up. That's only what I think, it could just be ripping up that way. But let's go on, last but not least, number one, Slide Rock Bolter. So the Slide Rock Bolter is a huge cryptid that allegedly lives in the mountains of Colorado. It has a huge head, small eyes, and a gaping mouth. It is said to look similar to a whale with a flared tail that has enormous grabbing hooks at the end. So it was reportedly seen around the late 19th and into the 20th centuries as a popular tale among lumberjacks and miners. Also, it only lives where the slope is more than a 45 degree angle, where it hides and waits for its prey. I'm guessing it uses this angle to be able to slide towards them as it will sit and wait until unsuspecting tourists walk by and then it unlocks its claws and just slides towards them. Due to its size, it's said to be able to eat whole parties of tourists in just one fell swoop. Once that it's caught its prey, it apparently uses its tail claws to climb back up the mountain and then rest again waiting for the next victim. Now skeptics say it may be a drunken lumberjack's explanation for a rock slide, but believers say it may have taken on more of a rocky look to camouflage itself nowadays, as big divots in Colorado mountains say, Ooh, maybe it's there, and it was sliding, eating the prey. Number 10, Ombre Cayman. Originating from Colombia, El Ombre Cayman's legend was one that's a little weird. See, Saul Montenegro was a bit of a peeping Tom, and his favorite spots to do so was the Magdalene Elena River. Fearing being revealed, he visited a witch and bought a potion that would allow him to turn into an alligator. Given two potions, the first was to turn him into his newly bescaled form, while the second was to turn him back to his usual pervy self. His system continued to his pleasure for a while, with a friend carrying the second potion and distributing it at Montenegro's leisure. However, one day the friend made a mistake, frightened by the alligator form, and dropped the reversal potion into the water. Now, some of it did land on Montenegro, just enough to turn his torso back into the form of a man, but his legs remained those of the alligator. And so he remained, eternally hunted like the freak he was. Number 9. Encantado A strange group of pink dolphins that is said to be located within the Amazon, these little weirdos are generally helpful to fishermen, with some claiming they even hold power over local weather. They're even professed to aid people that are drowning, but for all their good deeds, they do hold a pretty nasty little secret. See, the Encantado are 
profess to be capable of changing their form, turning into men once a year at Festa Unina. Wearing hats to conceal their blowholes, these handsome gentlemen join the festival where they seduce local women, and then proceed to leave them with a child that they won't be planning to raise. Ew. Number 8. El Cuero A cousin of the similarly shaped Weke Weke, this horrible monstrosity is professed to hide in lakes, floating on the water's surface. With a spotted hide, it's generally easy to mistake this creature for a discarded cow's hide. But it's best not to be fooled. Concealed beneath the skin are a collection of teeth, stalked eyes, and claws that line the edges of the hide, and a mouth that can extend to better consume its prey. There are even some reports that claim El Cuero can use weaponry, mostly knives and anything else its quarry might have been carrying. Supposedly, El Cuero is particularly fond of drinking blood, a number of its teeth being fangs. With all of that in mind, it's pretty safe to say that if you see a cowhide floating on a lake, you should just leave it alone. Even better, you'd just leave. Number 7. Maricoxi You know, with every culture in the world having some kind of variation on the Bigfoot legend, maybe it's time we started taking them a little bit seriously. However, the Maricoxi aren't just content to blurrily walk in front of cameras. Supposedly found by Percy Fawcett in an ex expedition to the Amazon in 1914, the Maricoxi were reported to live near the Maksubi tribe. Upon sighting Fawcett, they reportedly made overtures of diplomacy, but negotiations crumbled as Fawcett claimed to have been threatened with a bow. They opened fire on the Maricoxi, who responded in kind. Probably would have just been better to leave them alone, you feel? Number 6. Tapir Iwara Occasionally referred to as water jaguars, these strange creatures appear to be hybrids between tapirs and jaguars. Roughly the size of a cow, they're estimated to be carnivores, though attacks on humans are rare. Social creatures, the tapir iwara defend each other when threatened. Sometimes they're hunted due to being viewed as pests, though this is dangerous as one of their strangest defensive abilities is their ability to steal the soul of any who approach them. Reportedly, victims have developed mental illness and symptoms of malaria after just simply seeing or smelling the tapir iwara. The soul can be returned so long as a professional shaman does it, but some claim that smelling salts can be enough to get the job done. Number 5. Sasi Generally considered to be a bit of a pain in the neck, Sasi is a one-legged man wearing a red cap and smoking a pipe. Originally from the Tupi Guarani mythology, Sasi is generally known to reside within dust devils and is commonly attributed with their creation. There are multiple versions of Sasi and he's known to be able to even turn invisible or shapeshift into a large bird to escape capture. When given a chance, Saucy will cause mischief in just about any way he can. Hiding toys, keeping popcorn from popping, dropping rakes where people will step on them. It's generally stated that if something goes wrong, 9 times out of 10 it's because Saucy thought it'd be funny. That being said, he can be captured whether with a rosary, a bottle, or even just by stealing his red cap. From there, he might become a friend. But if he's treated poorly, eh, you better watch out. Number 4. Yakumama With the name Mother of Water, this massive serpent supposedly resides within the Amazon rainforest. Attributed with the birthing of all creatures in the famed Amazon River, Yakumama is known to hunt by ingesting massive amounts of water which it then spits at its prey. The sheer force enough to knock out the victim who will then be ingested by the serpent's leisure. Supposedly, if one decides to fish in any river and and they see an unbelievable bounty of fish within its waters, they must blow a conch horn before engaging in their hunt. The Akumama will then reveal itself if it's nearby, its plot foiled and the fishermen given a chance to escape. The whims of Yakumama are strange indeed, as unlike most reptiles, it doesn't always consume its prey, sometimes simply frightening them to the point where they run away, though why it does this remains to be seen. Number 3. Wallapen A Chilean creature, the Wallapen resides mostly within lakes and rivers. With the body of a sheep, the head of a cow, and flipper-like
like feet, this creature is supposedly capable of inducing miscarriages upon sight alone. While harmless on land, wallapen are famously violent when encountered in their natural habitat. Even stranger still, they appear to be capable of mating with both cows and sheep, which does at least explain their bizarre appearance. Some believe that they might be the source of, or a possibly younger version of El Cuero. The wallapen potentially shedding its skin, which might then be taken on by or transform into El Cuero. Regardless, these creatures are just another reason why I won't be taking a dip in any rivers anytime soon. Number 2. The Headless Mule We don't need a headless horse, man. We've got a headless horse, man. Supposedly a curse inflicted upon a sinning woman, this creature only appears between the evenings of Thursday and the mornings of Friday. It sprints between parishes, spewing flames from its neck and stopping for almost nothing as its path eventually leads to the location where its sin was committed. Supposedly, pricking the mules with a needle can temporarily stop the curse, as can tying her to a cross, but the only way to remove the curse for good is for someone to marry her. All one needs to do to avoid being trampled is to lie down and cover oneself with nails, teeth, or anything else that might shine. This will render the victim mostly invisible to the mule, who may then leave peacefully. Number 1. Patasola Appearing as a one-legged woman, the similarities with Sasi end just about there. Her origins can vary, but usually relate to some infidelity or act of cruelty committed before her death. When resurrected, a Patasola will begin her hunt, and is deeply protective of nature and those within. While she is known for generally just causing mischief, her grievances are more squarely aimed at hunters and loggers, interfering with their work the most. Luring her prey into the forest, Patasola then drains them of their blood, and is known to be able to shapeshift into a dog or a cow. She's also famed for singing from the treetops when she's completed a hunt. In our number 10 spot, we have Nessie is real. <laughs> okay guys, the law Loch Ness Monster is real. At least that's what I think after watching this recent video shot from the air looking down upon the water. There is literally a long neck looking dinosaur in the water and it has to be Nessie himself. Herself? Is Nessie a girl? This is definitely some footage that has been buried deep by the governments of the world, including the FBI. And why, you may ask? Damn, I don't know. Perhaps the discovery of this ancient creature could mean that there's more magical creatures out there. It could mean that there is a portal to a new world in the lake. Or perhaps it means that the wizarding world of Harry Potter is real. Anyways, this video I think is substantial proof that the cryptid that is known as the Loch Ness monster is in fact real. If you're enjoying this video, don't forget to smash that like button as it really helps us out. In our number 9 spot, we have the Deep Sea Cryptid. Okay, this footage blew my mind when I saw it. I personally think this is proof of yet another mythical ocean creature slash cryptid that we are unaware of yet. The ocean is so big and mysterious, I bet you even mermaids exist. <laughs> In August of 2018, the Japan Agency of Marine Earth Science and Technology when they found something in the waters of Sagami Bay near Tokyo. A big creature with big glowing eyes and a gaping mouth. Now at first it appears to move, but as the camera gets closer, it appears to freeze in place. And so, since we don't see it move much, some people say that it's an illusion of a creature and that it's really just a rock that looks like it has eyes, as humans have a tendency to see faces in inanimate objects. But what if? It's a creature that became aware of the fact that it was being watched and so it froze to look like a rock. This creature legit looks like it stepped right out of Monsters Inc. I don't know. Anyways, this footage could be nothing or it could be everything and that's why it's possible that it's being marketed as possibly nothing. In our number 8 spot, we have the Hide Behind. I had no idea what this was before I researched this video, but apparently there is an ancient creature known as a Hide Behind. And these creatures used to hide in forests and were nocturnal, and they would prey upon humans that wander the woods, such as lumberjacks. They are said to be able to conceal themselves. The creature quickly hides behind an object so it's not directly seen. This is how it's able to attack 
attack human prey by stalking them from afar and not be seen. Anyways, now that you know what a hide behind is, this video that was captured by a grandmother certainly shows a creature that looks just like a hide behind. A shadow, if you will. If this video was not staged, and it is real, like they claim, then I definitely think this is proof of some kind of hide behind or mythical creature. Perhaps it's Bigfoot, but certainly this shadowy figure doesn't seem completely normal. In our number seven spot, we have the Kraken. The giant squid known around the world as the Kraken is an enormous squid-like sea monster originally from Scandinavian folklore. People believe tales of the creature were created after fishermen spotted giant squid out on the water. Anyways, recently something very mysterious was discovered when zooming into the middle of the sea on Google Earth. A strange, large creature that appears to light up and looks to be very large and is creating a wake. Google Earth's measuring tool has shown that the wake is over 250 meters wide. This picture has surely had the FBI concerned as the internet has been going crazy trying to figure out if that's a Kraken, an ancient dinosaur-like fish, or an alien craft that perhaps crashed into the water or is in the water. Without a doubt though, there's something mysterious going on there. Where is the light coming from, my friends? My vote is for alien craft. That makes more sense in terms of where the light is coming from. In our number six spot, we have the alien sea creature. This may be our biggest piece of proof that aliens might live underneath us or in the water. This video captured from a Brazilian beach was buried deep online, probably by the FBI because of its mysteriousness. It showcases a very strange looking creature in the water that looks just like every picture of an alien that I've ever seen. Ever think about where we originally got our idea for how aliens look? Yeah, well probably from meeting them, or possibly from seeing creatures like this. This creature looks like it has arms and legs and is just walking around the shore and isn't seemingly looking threatening, just going about and doing its thing. It was described as a jellyfish-like monster. If that isn't an alien, then please explain to us what that is. Conclusion? It's an alien, an alien sea creature. In our number five spot, we have the baby dragon. A video was shot showing a creature in a pond that literally looks exactly like the ancient Chinese dragon that we see in folklore. Or they look like Khaleesi's dragons when they were babies. <laughs> Game of Thrones, anyone? Anyways, this video is wild, it's very, very strange. This creature is exactly like every image of a dragon that I'm sure you've ever seen, and it is just swimming around in the water. Dragons are so embedded into many cultures and over many civilizations, people believed in dragons, and so it just makes you think perhaps they were once real, or perhaps they are real. It's possible though that the old civilizations just stumbled across dinosaur bones that made them think fire breathing dragons were real too. That's very possible. But in any case, this specific video hasn't been proven to be real, so it's possible that it's fake. But if it were to be real, I'm sure a narrative would be spun around it because that would be a massive discovery that humans may not be ready for. In our number four spot, we have Bigfoot. Look, there are so many stories and supposed sightings of the Mudman Bigfoot, and honestly, this one is the most interesting one yet. A trail cam was deep in the woods when it captured a giant creature walking through the wood. It might be behind a row of trees, but it is clear as day that this creature is big, whatever it is. It appears to have hands and feet. It doesn't move like a bear. It moves like an oversized human. So this could very well be the best footage of Bigfoot that I've ever seen. Apparently the people that took this footage tend to upload footage of animals and bears and have no drive to tamper with the footage, so a lot of people believe it to be real. Also apparently after this they set up more trail cams in the hopes of seeing it again, but all of the additional cams went missing. Whoa, that's a smart Bigfoot right there. Making sure to watch the humans and get rid of all the evidence. Anyways, I think this is definitely footage the FBI would be worried about, so they themselves could have destroyed the trail cams. 
In our number three spot, we have the Blue Mountains Panther. The Blue Mountains Panther is a creature from Australian folklore that is that is essentially a giant panther that lives in the mountains of Australia. This panther has had sightings for centuries. However, Australia isn't known to have any kind of panther on the continent. Anyways, a picture of what looks like a giant cat-like creature, most likely a panther, was caught on camera and it's had Australia in a tizzy. It's the Blue Mountain Panther. Ever Everyone thinks. It's clear as day that it's a cat like creature and it looks like a panther. If it is not this mythical creature, then what is it? Would love to know your thoughts in the comment section below. In our number two spot, we have Sasquatch. This next footage is really interesting and something I know has been buried because of the sheer amount of people that can confirm its validity. While on a ski slope, a bunch of skiers had to stop as they appeared to see a giant in the woods. Everything you have ever heard about Sasquatch would describe what these people saw. Harry, ape-like, living in the woods. The footage captured shows it trying to hide, but without a doubt, it was seen by many, and that would certainly put a dent in the theory that Sasquatch is a mythological creature. Some people think that our human ancestors or relatives could have survived into the modern era, and so this creature could just be a human ancestor. If this is true, then one, there must be two of them to have continued on the speed like this or two if there's only one is this an is this an immortal human ancestor from centuries ago the latter would certainly be cooler we discovered how to fly in the sky perhaps we humans have discovered everlasting life and the general public just doesn't know about it yet side thought <laughs> in our number one spot an elf <laughs> on a First Nation reserve in Saskatchewan, a strange creature was caught on camera that quite possibly the FBI doesn't want you to see. In the video, you see a creature go behind a large rock when the person recording the video turns their light on. It's kind of hard to make out exactly what it is. Some people think that it's an elf or a fairy or a windigo, a type of shape-shifting creature that is evil. Honestly, I don't know what it is, but it appears to be some kind of mythical creature. People have been reporting seeing this monster for thousands of years, and so it makes you think that there might be something to this video, and it could very well showcase something no human has officially been able to confirm before on camera. I hope it's an elf. That sounds way better than an evil shapeshifter. <laughs> if elves exist, they should just come and live among us. I bet you us humans would accept them. How could we not? They're so cute and cool. And we're starting off this list today with the Werewolf of Defiance. It's uh, the summer of 1972. Two railroad workers were hard at work on the Norfolk and Western Railway when all of a sudden, one of them, Ted Davis, looked up to see a large wolf-like creature with a wooden board grasped between its paws, which it then whacked the man in the shoulder with before turning off into the bushes to run away like a, like a coward. Five days later, Ted and his coworker Tom Jones returned to the railway for another day's work, hoping they wouldn't be seeing the big furry monster again. Only they did. Only this time it was a bit of a safe distance away. Not that I'd ever feel a safe distance away from a werewolf, but that's just me. And then they reported the sightings to the police. Right around this time, more and more wolfman sightings began piling in, and locals began to panic about the potential of being mauled by a six foot tall werewolf. Imagine actually like feeling that that was a possibility. Like you're heading out of the grocery store and you're like, damn, like really hope I don't run into a lycanthrope today. That's their life apparently in Ohio. Up next, we have the Loveland Frog. This mysterious creature has been reported to have been sighted in Loveland, Ohio. The amphibious creature is said to resemble a bipedal frog standing upright on its hind legs measuring up to four feet tall. Not that big, but pretty big for a frog though. Got leathery skin, webbed fingers and toes. You all know how frogs look. And it's also got those iconic glowing large eyes. The first reported sighting of the Loveland frog was in 1955, when a man claimed to have seen three of them on the side of the road holding some kind of strange wand-like device. Again, only in Ohio 
would you spot three large frogs practicing magic under a bridge? I, I really gotta visit Ohio sometimes. Yeah, it just seems like such a fantastical place. Again, Narnia got nothing on Ohio. Anyway, since that initial 1955 sighting, there have been several other ones, including one by a police officer in 1972, who reported seeing a creature fitting the description of the Loveland frog scuttling across the road and then hopping over the guardrail into the Little Miami River. Another officer even claimed to have shot at the creature, but it escaped. Some people believe the Loveland frog is an escaped exotic pet or mutated frog, while others speculate that it is a supernatural type of creature. At number eight on the list, we have melon heads. The melon heads are a group of cryptids that have been reported to have been sighted in various locations in Ohio, but are primarily found in the Cleveland suburb of Kirtland. These creatures are said to be small in stature with large bulbous heads and distorted facial features. According to legend, they were the result of an experiment gone wrong in which scientists conducted unethical experiments on orphans, resulting in the creation of these strange bobble-headed beings. Some variations of the story also claim that the melon heads are the descendants of a family who suffered from a rare genetic disorder, maybe, that you know, caused their heads to grow abnormally large. Some even say they could be of extraterrestrial origin, which, which whatever they are, though, I want to see one. I, I'm telling you, I'm coming to Ohio to go on a full cryptid scavenger hunt, and I'd better see me a, a weird, deformed melon head. Head. And number seven, it's Bessie. The Bessie Lake Monster or the Lake Erie Monster. It's a legendary creature that is said to inhabit Lake Erie. The creature is described as a, a big, similar in appearance to Loch Ness Monster, kind of long necked, humpback, as well as a serpentine kind of dinosaur like body. The first reported sighting of Bessie dates back to 1973 when a duck hunter saw a large serpentine like creature thrashing in the lake and startled by his gunshots. And since then, numerous sightings have been reported over the years. Some eyewitnesses claim to have seen the creature swimming close to their boats or even on the shore, while others have reported hearing strange eerie sounds coming from the water. Despite many attempts attempts to capture or study the creature. There is no concrete evidence of its existence. However, the legend of Bessie persists and many people believe that there is something mysterious lurking beneath the surface of Lake Erie. When it comes, you know, when it comes to creatures that reside in the water, I also, I gotta say, it seems plausible. We don't, we don't spend a lot of time underwater, you know? Lots could be lurking in those murky depths. You never know. Number six, Mothman of Gallia County. Most of us have probably heard of the infamous Mothman. Large, winged, glowing red eyes. It was first reported in West Virginia in 1966, but one of the most famous sightings of this large flying insect was over the Silver Bridge that connected Point Pleasant, West Virginia to the village of Gallipolis, Ohio. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right, but I think it's Gallipolis. This sighting happened just a year after the first reported Mothman sighting, and right around the time when the creature was spotted on the Silver Bridge, it collapsed. And some still believe that this mysterious cryptid was the one responsible. There have also been reported Mothman sightings before other big disasters, which has led some to speculate as to whether Mothman is a bad omen or if it is simply appears as kind of like a warning of impending doom, bad or good. Orange eyes. Now, this is a uh, Sasquatch type creature that could very well be the same type of creature as a couple others we'll be discussing on the list. There are many Sasquatch variations seen throughout Ohio, but this one is famous for, as you could probably imagine, it's got these glowing orange eyes. There have been reports of strange creatures with orange eyes lurking in Ohio, said to reside in the Riverside Cemetery before moving to the woods by Mill Lake. Witnesses described the creature as resembling a large bipedal humanoid with a muscular build and a hunched posture. Its eyes, once again, seem to emit an otherworldly glow. The creature is reportedly very fast and agile and has been known to vanish into thin air when pursued. Some locals believe that Orange Eyes is a Bigfoot type creature, but there are also those theories that maybe a kind of supernatural being or extraterrestrial entity as well. 
all. At number four, we have Dogman. Most Dogman reports come out of Michigan, but there have been sightings in Ohio as well. According to witnesses, the Dogman is a bipedal, wolf like creature that stands between six and seven feet tall with a muscular build and a snarling, dog like face. The first reported sightings of the Dogman in Ohio occurred in the late 1980s. Since then, there have been numerous other sightings reported in the state. Witnesses have reported seeing the creature hunting in the woods, stalking prey, and even running across highways at high speeds. Some skeptics believe that the sightings, of course, may be misidentifications of known animals like bears or wolves, while others believe that the dogman is a real undiscovered species that is yet to be officially documented by science. Number three, the Crosswick monster. Now, there's only one report of this cryptid, but it's it's quite the entertaining tale. It's like something out of a classic 1950s monster movie or something like that. And it's, it's a pretty famous piece of Ohio cryptid folklore. The story goes that in 1882, two boys, Ed and Joe Lynch, began hearing strange sounds coming from the tall grass of a bush behind them. They were fishing. And then before they had time to think, a large four-legged lizard creature popped out from the bushes and began making its way toward them. The boys tried to make their escape, but it caught the 13-year-old Ed in its mouth and began dragging him towards a large hollowed out tree. Three men had heard the boys screaming and managed to make it to Ed's aid before he was pulled into the tree, although he was badly injured. A group of like about 60 men were formed armed with axes and clubs and they tried to slay the beast but the creature managed to escape actually standing on its hind legs at one point. It's pretty horrifying. The group chased the creature which retreated into a hole under a large hill of rocks. The creature was never seen again. It's described as black and white in color and roughly 12 feet in length. Number two, the Minerva Monster. This has to be one of the most famous Sasquatch sightings in Ohio. In August of 1978, in the village of Minerva, the first sighting of the creature was reported by the Caton family, who had seen a large hairy creature in the gravel pit outside of their property, looking to be about 300 pounds. It soon became known as the Minerva Monster and terrorized the Caton family on more than one occasion. They described seeing it peering through their kitchen window one night. Awful. And when police came to investigate, they saw large footprints around their home with a terrible smell lingering in the air. The creature was also reported to have thrown rocks at their home one day, and they even reported seeing two large hairy bipeds on a hill by the strip mine near their property. The family has been adamant about what they saw ever since, and their story has remained consistent. It wasn't just the Catons who had run-ins with the large ape-like creature, though. Other locals began reporting seeing a similar creature in and around the Minerva area around the same time. And that's going to bring us to our number one spot, the Ohio Grassman. There's a, a very good chance that the Minerva monster and orange eyes are the very same creature I'm describing here as they're all big, all furry, ape-like creatures. Grassman is pretty much Ohio's nickname for Bigfoot, described as a large, hairy, bipedal creature standing between seven and nine feet tall. Grassman is said to have human-like face and a muscular build. Witnesses have reported hearing eerie vocalizations and howls coming from the woods, as well as seeing large footprints that they believe belong to the creature. The first reported sightings of the Ohio Grassman occurred in the late 1800s, but the creature gained widespread attention in the 1970s when multiple sightings were reported in the state. Since then, there have been numerous other sightings reported in the area, while some skeptics dismiss the sightings, of course, as misidentifications of, you know, animals or even hoaxes. Others believe that the Grassman is real and he's an undiscovered species. And we're starting it off today with Puckwudgies. The Puckwudgie is a creature from Native American folklore that is said to inhabit the forests of the northeastern United States. According to legend, Puckwudgies are mischievous tricksters who can cause harm to humans if they are angered or offended. There have been a number of reported sightings of the creatures throughout Ohio. According to folklore, puckwudgies are small humanoid creatures that stand about two to three feet tall. They are said to have gray skin, large ears, and a large nose. Some legends also describe them as having quills or spines on their backs. They're believed to be skilled hunters and are said to use their magical powers to disappear and reappear at will. They're 
are also said to have the ability to shapeshift into animals or objects. In some Native American traditions, Pukwudgies are viewed as protectors of the forest and are said to have the power to ward off evil spirits. However, in other legends, Pukwudgies are seen as mischievous troublemakers who enjoy playing pranks on humans. So if you do happen to see one, prepare to be clowned. Next on the list, we have the Cedar Bog Monster. Now, this is one of those cryptids that could very well be a Sasquatch, or of course, a Grassman as it's known locally in Ohio. It's more of a name given to the specific place this creature was seen though. When Cedar Bog opened as a nature preserve in 1942, people immediately began flocking to the area to witness the various species of birds, the fish and plants, and just soak in the nature. But what they didn't expect or want to see was a large, hairy humanoid creature. But many did report seeing the big ape-like creature strolling along Woodburn Road, which runs right beside the bog. They reported that whatever the thing was, it was too large to be a man. I'm also uh, sure the fur and gorilla-like face kind of gave that away too, possibly. There was also an incident where three teenagers went missing in the park while on a camping trip. Apparently, there were reports of loud screams coming from Cedar Bog. And number eight, we have the Charles Mills Lake Monster. Now, there is only one reported encounter with this creature, but it's a uh, it's a pretty eerie story. On the night of March 28th, 1959, 1959 is going to come up a lot on this list, by the way. I don't know what it was about that year, but there was some stuff going on in Ohio. Anyway, three teenage boys had been hanging out around the Charles Mill Reservoir when they suddenly saw something forming out of the dark water before them. It was a seven foot tall humanoid that began moving towards them. It was described as having no arms, bright glowing green eyes, and webbed feet. The teens obviously booked it out of there and reported what they saw to authorities who made their way to the area where they came across footprints, if you could even describe whatever made the tracks as feet. They were large indents that appeared as if they were made by webbed feet. Who knows what this thing was? Even if it was real or just a hoax, there was indeed a large fishy monster skulking around the lake. I'm, uh, I'm guessing it must have smelt like a, like a sewer. Number seven, alien big cats. Alien big cats are, are a very real thing. These are big cats like panthers or leopards found outside of their natural environments. The alien part doesn't mean that these cats are from outer space, but then again, who knows how they got there, right? In 2011, there were several sightings of supposed alien big cats in and around Dayton, Ohio. A private zoo owner by the name of Terry Thompson had released upwards of 50 animals into the wild before, unfortunately, taking his own life in October of 2011, which resulted in, of course, several reports of large cats spotted throughout the area. 48 of them were either put under by police or sent off to Columbus Zoo. There had been reports of alien big cat sightings before these animals were known to be released, though, which is strange. Multiple sightings of black panthers dating back to April of 2011, and police would continue investigating sightings until around April of 2012. Phantom kangaroos. All right, so we have uh, big cats being reported in Ohio, so now we're moving on to kangaroos. Ohio is just full of dangerous wildlife, apparently. The phantom kangaroo is a cryptid that is said to resemble a kangaroo or wallaby and is believed to inhabit various parts of the world, including the United States. Basically, again, these are kangaroos showing up in places they shouldn't be, like Ohio. Except the stranger part is that these phantom kangaroos have been spotted where no escaped kangaroos have been reported. The creature is known for its elusive nature, as well as its ability to seemingly disappear without a trace and leave no evidence behind, almost like a ghost. A phantom kangaroo, if you will. Some experts believe that these sightings may be the result of misidentifications, of course, of other animals like large domestic dogs or coyotes, but I don't know, maybe there's some kangies running around Ohio. Number five, devil monkeys. So yeah, it seems like there are all kinds of uh, hairy apes and monkeys in Ohio as well. Who, who would have guessed? You got uh, Grassman, who may or may not be Bigfoot, the hairy orange eyes creature we talked about in part one, and now this baboon looking beast. The devil monkey is a cryptid that is believed to inhabit the forests and rural areas of North America, described as a large, aggressive 
primate-like creature with gray or black fur and red eyes. The devil monkey is known for its terrifying appearance and alleged attacks on humans and domestic animals. There have been numerous reports of sightings of the creature in Ohio and other parts of the U.S. Witnesses have described encountering a large bipedal creature that stands on two legs and resembles a monkey or a baboon with a fierce expression and a tendency to attack without provocation. There are many folks that are convinced that the devil monkey is a real creature and sightings continue to be reported until this day. Some cryptozoologists speculate that the devil monkey may be a new species of primate that is yet to be officially recognized, uh, while others believe it could be a surviving member of a prehistoric primate species that was previously thought to be extinct. The Trumbull County UFO Incident. Next up, we have a well-documented UFO sighting. There have been multiple UFO sightings in the state of Ohio, dating back a long ways, but this one is from 1994. I don't, I don't see why aliens wouldn't want to observe Ohio. It seems like there's a lot going on, as you could probably tell from these lists. Maybe they were hovering around, placing bets on what creature they'd spot first. Lots to choose from. There were uh, tons of witnesses to this odd event on December 14th, 1994. Citizens, multiple police officers, dispatchers, it was pretty significant. Multiple residents had reported seeing low flying lights in the sky. The first police officer on the scene, Sergeant Toby Malero, had a, a pretty odd incident. As he was moving closer to the odd lights in the sky, talking with the dispatcher the entire time, his radio suddenly stopped working and his vehicle just shut off before he was engulfed in a bright light from above. He exited his vehicle, not quite knowing how to go about this odd occurrence, and reported seeing a giant circular shaped object hovering in the sky, which apparently made no sound. Once the object flew away, his car and radio, bam, started working again. 14 other law enforcement officers also saw these mysterious UFOs that night, with one even climbing up on a radar tower for a better view, and then claimed to have seen three circular flying objects that changed color in unison. Number three, Helltown. So while this one is a place and not actually a cryptid per se, it is reported to be an incredibly strange and dangerous place where all sorts of spooky happenings occur. Helltown has been left behind, now an abandoned town where nothing but empty homes, cathedrals, and unused bridges still stand. Though there are some who are said to still reside there, such as ghosts, mutants, animals and cultists. The residents of the town formerly known as Boston, Ohio had been forced to leave their homes in 1974 when President Gerald Ford signed a bill that gave the federal government's National Park Service jurisdiction to expropriate land for establishment of, of natural parks. The NPS began buying up properties and eventually it was a ghost town. In the mid 80s, there were several chemical spills in Helltown that some believed resulted in the mutated animals spotted in the area. And apparently there's also a haunted school bus and stuff like that. Uh, interesting place to go, I'd imagine. And at number two, we have Octoman. On a cold Cincinnati night in January of 1959, police began receiving several reports of a strange octopus-like creature. It started with a man who called police in a panic, saying that he saw something come out of the river, calling it uh, completely indescribable. This report was followed by one from a truck driver just soon after, claiming to have seen a strange creature while driving into Cincinnati. More and more reports began coming in, but it was, it was hard for anyone to describe exactly what they were seeing. What police did note, however, was that the, the people calling about these encounters sounded pretty shaken up. Even though the, the police kind of didn't believe it, they were joking a little bit, that was one thing they did know. These people sounded like they did see something. The more reports that came in as well, the closer they would get to form a, a description of the creature. A, a very very large creature with grayish skin, tentacles, and a lopsided chest. Sounds pretty, sounds like a pretty attractive creature there. One person was stated as saying, it was large, not a dog or a cat. It leaped in front of my car and on two legs and was, it was taller than the auto. When I looked back in my mirror, it was moving along the bridge rail. It was three or four times the size of a man and much bulkier. I have an eye in mind for dimensions and I know it was huge. 
And coming in at number one is the Peninsula Python. Now this is a really interesting one because it really uh, did exist. Sure, it's not really a cryptid per se, but this was an incident that actually took place and it's uh, pretty wild stuff. The summer of 1944, people in Summit County, Ohio began spotting a massive sized python in Cuyahoga Valley National Park. It was reported being around 15 feet in length, and incredibly thick. It was a python, definitely a real animal. It was just in the wrong part of the world, that's all. It's still kind of a mystery as to how it got there, but it's rumored that it was being transported through the area, possibly for a circus or something, but uh, managed to escape. Residents were understandably pretty scared that summer as the giant snake roamed through farms, leaving giant tire-sized indents in its wake. It even attacked livestock. The python was also never found, just disappeared eventually. Most likely died curled up somewhere after succumbing to the Ohio winter though. In the vast, untamed wilderness of Texas, whispers of a fearsome creature known as the Wampus Cat have echoed through the ages. Countless locals hailing from remote towns and ranches claim to have encountered this enigmatic cryptid, leaving an indelible mark on the region's folklore. Descriptions of the Wampus Cat vary, but a, a common thread we throughout. Uh, it's a creature with the body of a monstrous feline, possessing sleek black fur that glistens under the moonlight. Its piercing glowing eyes pierce through the darkness, striking fear into the hearts of those who dare to gaze upon it. As diverse as the Lone Star State itself, some say the Wampus Cat prowls silently in the dense pine forests of East Texas, emitting blood-curdling cries that reverberate through the night. Others claim to have witnessed the creature sprinting across open plains leaving behind a trail of shattered trees and a trampled earth. The bravest souls speak of unsettling encounters near secluded water sources where the wampus cat is said to drink, its presence sending wildlife scattering in terror. Those who have encountered the wampus cat speak of an uncanny primal energy emanating from the creature. Its presence is said to invoke an inexplicable sense of dread, as if crossing paths with an otherworldly force deeply rooted in the untamed heart of Texas. Whether the Wampus Cat is an embodiment of uh, ancient Native American legends or a creature yet to be fully understood, we still don't know. Number nine, the Chupacabra. The Chupacabra uh, is a legendary creature that has gained notoriety throughout the world. Sightings reported across Latin America, the United States. The creature is described as having a reptilian or canine-like appearance with large fangs and a pronounced spine along its back. It's said to prey on livestock, draining their blood and leaving behind a trail of carnage. One of the most famous encounters occurred in Texas, however, when a woman named Phyllis Canyon discovered what she believed to be the remains of the creature on the side of a road. Canyon was initially skeptical of reports of the chupacabra, but was pretty convinced of its existence after discovering this bizarre carcass. She had also had found several of her chickens dead on her property around the time she found this strange animal. Canyon's discovery sparked quite a media frenzy with reports and cryptid enthusiasts from around the world jumping in excitement. While some skeptics dismissed the creature as a coyote or other known animal, Canyon maintained that its appearance was unlike anything she had ever seen before. And it definitely could be some sort of wild dog with mange or something, but either way, pretty gnarly looking animal. In 2001, a 19 year old driving in Pennsylvania reported reported seeing a bird-like creature with a wingspan of 10 to 15 feet and it had an elongated head. Two other witnesses later reported seeing similar creatures in the same area and all of this was very reminiscent of sightings in Texas in 1976 and 82 that were also described as looking sort of like an ancient pterosaur. These uh, sightings in Texas occurred near the location where the fossil of a large pterosaur was first discovered and what was most fascinating about these sightings right? they seemed to have occurred close together in waves. So it, it seems like people were really seeing something. One possible explanation could be the frigate bird, which can have a wingspan of up to eight feet. Frigate birds tend to soar for long periods and only land to tend to their young. 
At number seven, we have Sasquatch, because these things are everywhere, apparently. Everyone has their own version of this big hairy beast. So look, Sasquatch needs no introduction, but I'm gonna give the big hairy lug one anyway. The Sasquatch, or Bigfoot, as he's commonly known, is basically the ultimate celebrity cryptid. Everyone knows who he is, but nobody has actually seen him in person, or have they? Apparently, Texas is home to many Bigfoot sightings. It seems that he's been spotted more than a few times wandering around in the woods. Some people claim that he's up to 10 feet tall, because everything is bigger in Texas, covered in hair, and uh, smells like a wet dog. Others say that he's more of a, uh, a gentle giant who just wants to be left alone. All I know is there really are Bigfoot roaming around in the wilderness of Texas. They gotta be just sweltering hot with all that fur. The Legend of the Donkey Lady of San San Antonio of San Antonio is a famous Texas urban legend. According to the legend, the donkey lady is a half human, half donkey creature that roams the area. Some say she was once a beautiful woman who was tragically burned and disfigured in a fire. Some say she was thrown in a river with her pet donkey and now haunts the Elm Creek Bridge. Some claim to have actually seen her and it's a tale that's been passed down from generation to generation and who knows, maybe there's some truth to it. I mean, if, if you squint your eyes while looking at a donkey long enough, it, it sort of looks like a person, right? And if you've ever heard a donkey braying in the middle of the night, not hard to imagine it could be some sort of supernatural creature. Then again, maybe the donkey lady is just a misunderstood animal, human hybrid who's just trying to find her place in the world. Up next, we have the skunk ape. Oh boy, do I love the skunk ape. The skunk ape is a legendary cryptid that is mostly seen in Florida, but there have also been numerous sightings in Texas and a couple other states. This creature is similar to Bigfoot, but it is said to have a distinct odor. That's the name. And it also likes hanging around swamps. That's where most apes tend to hang out in nature. Many people have claimed to have seen this elusive creature, and some even have photographic evidence to support their claims. In 2000, a series of photos surfaced, taken by a woman on her back porch that showed what appeared to be a skunk ape walking through a swampy area. And I have always loved these photos. Yes, it could definitely be an escaped orangutan or, or something, but uh, it's pretty freaky nonetheless. And if it is a costume, which I really don't think it is, uh, it's a it's got to be a pretty damn good one. The photos were taken in Florida, but it's not surprising that there have been sightings in Texas as well. After all, Texas is a, a vast state with plenty of forests and wilderness areas where a creature like the skunk ape could hide. Despite the many sightings and alleged evidence, there are still skeptics who don't believe in the existence of Skunk Ape. But for those who have seen it or have smelt its distinctive odor, there's no denying there is something strange and mysterious lurking in the swamps and woods of Florida and Texas. The Black Eyed Children. Black Eyed Children are a mysterious and creepy phenomenon that have captivated the attention of paranormal enthusiasts for years. The supposed sightings involve encountering children with completely black eyes, just no sclera in there. And they seem to appear out of nowhere and ask to be let into people's homes or vehicles. Sometimes they ask you to help them with a, a small favor, but their true intentions are sinister because they have pure black eyes. Some people believe these children are demonic or extraterrestrial in origin, while others believe they are simply a, a creepy urban legend. The first written account of the Black Eyed Children, or at least the, the most famous, came from Texas reporter Brian Bethel in 1996. Bethel shared his experience of encountering two children with completely black eyes while sitting in his car. Since Bethel's account, numerous reports of Black Eyed Children have emerged, with many claiming to have reported feeling a sense of dread and unease when encountering this, these mysterious rascals. And I think I know why people feel a little off seeing these kids. Uh, their eyes are pure black. That would, that would do it for me. The Beast of Bears. The Beast of Bears is a cryptid that is said to roam the wilds of Texas, resembling a large, scarred up bear with missing patches of fur. It's rumored to live near swamps, adding to the creature's uh, mysterious allure. Some even say that it has gills, making it a uh, 
truly unique and peculiar creature. What kind of bizarre mashup of things is this? Uh, Goatman uh, uh, apparently has gills too. So why are all these big hairy Texas monsters also aquatic? Anyway, the Beast of Bears also boasts large red eyes like those of the Mothman, which only adds to the intrigue surrounding this cryptid. The first sighting of the Beast of Bears was in 1973 at a camping spot near the town of Alice, Texas. Since then, over 31 sightings have been reported, with the most recent being in a backyard outside Crestview, Florida. However, the Beast of Bears is most closely associated with Texas. Many reports of sightings coming from various parts of the state. Despite skeptics dismissing the Beast of Bears as a hoax, there is evidence to suggest that the creature may be real. Even a drawing of the creature suggests that it may be found not only in Texas, but also up in Canada. Some have even linked the Beast of Bears to Inuit stories about giant bears that drag people underwater and eat them. And coming in at number two, the Lake Worth Monster. The Lake Worth Monster, also known as the famous Goatman, is a cryptid that has long captivated the attention of Texans. Sightings of the creature began in the summer of 1969, when a group of people reported encountering a strange half-man, half-goat-like creature near Lake Worth, just outside of Fort Worth. Descriptions of the creature vary, but most witnesses report seeing a towering, hairy beast with a goat's head, cloven hooves, and the ability to leap great distances. Some descriptions of the strange beast, and some even describe it as having fishy scales. Uh, I'll over its body, which don't seem to fit. But anyway, over the course of several weeks, the creature was allegedly cited by numerous individuals, leading to a media frenzy and an increased public interest in the elusive creature. One article written by reporter Jim Mars was written with the, uh, I gotta say, hilarious headline, Fishy Man Goat Terrifies Couple Parked at Lake Worth. Love that. Some locals claimed the creature was aggressive, throwing car tires and rocks at those who stumbled upon it, while others reported it simply observing them from a distance. And finally, we have the NASA gargoyle. There have been multiple sightings of this mysterious creature, but the first reported sighting, and definitely the most famous, was from NASA employee Frank Shaw, who worked in Houston's Johnson Space Center. Shaw had reported walking back to his car after his shift and spotted what looked to be a large, winged, jet black humanoid creature perched on one of the Space Center's buildings. Suddenly, it started unfurling its wings, which apparently made this awful crackling sound, and then it just swooped into the air. I'm, I'm picturing the creature from Jeepers Creepers here, so not pleasant. Shy had been uh, completely stunned, frozen in fear at the sight of whatever this beast was, but suddenly kind of snapped out of it as soon as the thing flew into the air and started making his way back to his car, where in classic horror movie fashion, he struggled to get his keys into the door. I'm picturing him just kind of like dropping them a couple times. <laughs> but he finally uh, got into his car and just flew out of there. Here's what's really interesting about this incident though. Apparently there were other employees at the station who had also had encounters with the winged monstrosity. Apparently there had been a file opened on the creature just a few months before Shaw saw it, after two German shepherds at the station had been found completely mutilated in the same area as Shaw's sighting. So that's pretty interesting. Mm -hmm.